Uh, welcome to Pain Points. I'm Dr. Jay Kaler, and thanks again for joining us this Thursday. Um, Pain Points, the, the goal of this is, is really education and advocacy, both for ourselves as well as our family members, and, and really education. That's the, that's the basis of everything that we're doing. This is an open invitation um, online forum where you guys can ask questions and, and interact with me. Um, and I really want to really want to reach out and, and try to teach some of these things that, that may not have been uh, readily shared with you in the past. So today we're going to be talking uh, about spinal cord stimulation. It's part three of our four-part series. And so today it is really going to be discussing the clinical evidence, the level one randomized controlled clinical trials that are behind spinal cord stimulation. It's really interesting. The other day I was actually reading um, a post online and it said, well, spinal cord stimulation is an experimental uh, newer therapy for blocking your pain. And I think the thing about this that just bugs me so much is none of that is true. It's not experimental, it's not new, and it's not a pain blocker. Uh, so I want to get into this. We're going to get into the evidence. Um, and again, these might be things that are a little out of your wheelhouse. That's okay. Ask a question. I would love to share uh, our, our rationale behind why we do these studies, how we do these studies, and what they mean for you as the patient. So today's schedule, it's a quick recap. We're going to be doing this every time about spinal cord stimulation. That way, if you're jumping in in the middle of uh, this four-part series, you can still kind of keep up with what we're doing. Uh, so what is spinal cord stimulation? How does it work? We're going to talk about the burst DR waveform. This is a specific type of electrical programming that we use with spinal cord stimulation. The next is high frequency spinal cord stimulation or HF10. That's 10 kilohertz frequency stimulation. And the last is this DTM therapy, which is differentially targeted multiplexing therapy. And so all of these have unique mechanisms of action and way that they work. Um, and they the waveform look markedly different. So the relief is markedly different. Um, and so let's get into this. On the right here of this picture, we have a uh, spinal cord uh, stimulator lead that's sitting on the back of the spinal cord. And you can see on that, there are these all these little black boxes. These are contacts and the contacts are actually what we utilize and send electricity through. And on the right is two examples of different waveforms that we could be utilizing to reprogram and remap the spinal cord. So a quick overview as to what is spinal cord stimulation? They are wires that go on the lead, or they, they are wires that go on the spinal cord, either in the midline, they are leads that can be on the spinal cord or on the dorsal root ganglion, and they're connected to a battery, and that battery is actually what we use to drive energy in a programmed fashion. So spinal cord stimulation is a precise pattern of electrical impulses, and those impulses fundamentally change the interaction between the brain and our spinal cord with regard to our chronic pain. We construct an electrical field, and it's that electrical field that changes these neural signals that are, that are occurring there. And so that's a really important uh, feature of spinal cord stimulation. And most importantly, in my opinion, it's not a pain blocker. It doesn't work like that. And the the, the three ways that spinal cord stimulation works, we're gonna elicit, or we're gonna, we're gonna elucidate that right here. And so we have a pain source. We have a signal that's coming in from the outside of the body that's gonna go into the spinal cord. And what spinal cord stimulation does is it's actually going to inhibit that. So we have the signal that now is in the spinal cord. And normally that signal would cross over, go up to the brain and you would feel the pain. Well, here, this little blue guy here is an interneuron, and we know that interneurons are very important for modulating pain going to the brain. And so with spinal cord stimulation, we can actually activate or inactivate these neurons so that pain does not go to the brain. And these are normal features that our spinal cord has. So in essence, we're able to change the signals that are making it to the brain by changing our innate uh, modulation pathways in the spinal cord. So that's a that's the first way. And these these occur through a couple different mechanisms. Um, and those mechanisms include the following. So first, we're going to increase powerful pain relieving neurotransmitters. Uh, it's going to bolster our brain's ability to stop pain signals uh, that are coming to it. And lastly, we're going to decrease actual inflammation within the spinal cord. And those are the three big ways that spinal cord stimulation works. So that instead of having an inflamed, undermodulated spinal cord, regardless of what the original pain signal is, 
Now we are going to augment the, the brain's ability to block pain signals, decrease inflammation, increase those neurotransmitters, and get that spinal cord back to really working like a spinal cord should. Um, and so that's really going to put the stop sign there so that the signals that are supposed to get to the brain get there and the ones that aren't don't. All right, moving on. Let's talk about waveforms. So we have all these contacts that are on the spinal cord. And what we're doing is we're sending electricity through them. There's a whole bunch of different waveforms that we use. And those electrical signals look different. And they can have a different amplitude. They can have a different pulse width. They can have a different frequency. All of these things determine what the actual change is that's happening in the spinal cord. And so we control those parameters. But the thing that's important to know is it's not just the energy and the, and, the, and the pattern that that energy is getting there that's important. It's also where we're stimulating. And that's why trialing and mapping and understanding the anatomy of the spinal cord is so crucial for spinal cord stimulation to work. And that's also why we might have to try a little bit of trial and error in there to be able to uh, get to the perfect situation. And so the shape and the pattern of those electrical impulses will determine the waveform. And so what's, what's really, really important as we go through spinal cord stimulation and work through it is figuring out which is the right series of electrical pulses for you, what do the patterns look like that give you the best pain relief, and where, where on the spinal cord are we actually stimulating to get the pain relief that we need. And this is really the critical importance of having an algorithm of working with your physician and not just the device representative, working with your physician, working with your PA, your nurse practitioner, someone to be able to actually guide our way through these therapies, because it's not like a light switch. Some of these things take 24 hours to wash in to be able to get pain relief. So we want to make slow, calculated changes and observe the effect. If we make too many decisions within too short of a time period, we're actually not sure what's working, what's not working. And so there's a number of different therapies that are out there. And this is kind of the difference at a, at a very high level. At the top, you can see traditional tonic stimulation, which is just a very, very slow pulsing of electrical activity. Now it's slow to the electricity, but for us, this would actually be many times a second. And then there's burst therapy, which, use which uses this pattern of, of a, a series of five stacked uh, charges uh, to kind of simulate some of our neurons that are in our body, and that's called burst therapy. And it comes in packets, so little packets of energy. Da -da 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 -da. Da -da 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 and then you have high frequency therapy, which is the last, and that's where you're, you're going at 10,000 um, uh, times a second, and you're really giving very, very high dose um, energy into the spinal cord. So different types of therapies for different patients, and it depends on the patient, it depends on the phenotype that we're seeing. So let's talk about the evidence. The first that we're going to look at is the burst DR evidence, and that burst is that packet of energy that we looked at before. And so in this, they actually did a crossover study where they took 100 patients, and they put half of them on one type of therapy and half on the burst therapy. And then after about 12 weeks, they switched them, and they said, okay, you guys get the tonic therapy, and you guys get this specialized burst therapy. And what they found um, when they looked at these patients out at uh, one year and two year is that patients markedly uh, preferred the burst therapy and they had better outcomes. And so this is this type of, of packeted algorithm where we're sending little packets of energy specifically to stimulate the spinal cord in, uh, in a way that's different than was done for many years. And what we found is that pain relief compared to where patients were before was markedly improved. And so you might see all these numbers on this graph and say, okay, well, I see the bars are going down. What is that? Well, that's VAS or it's the pain score. So if you were a, if you were a seven out of 10, then you would be 70 on this, on this scale. So you see here, patients went from a 7.4 out of 10 down to a 4.2 out of 10 at about one year. So this is what's really, really interesting when looking at these therapies, you can see Oh, this isn't experimental. They've actually done the studies. And you have to remember, this is 100 patients that are implanted with electrical stimulators. This is a lot of patients and a lot of time and energy that's gone in to really proving that this therapy is a durable long-term option for patients. So now let's look at high-frequency stimulation. High-frequency is that very fast stimulation. 
The top line here is actually that slow stimulation, and that's the buzzing and tingling program, if you've got a tingles program or a paresthesia program. But below that, you actually have the high frequency program, and that's a very, very fast controlled electricity that you won't feel. This is what we call subparesthesia. So you shouldn't feel this, this high dose program, but what you do get out of it is a lot of energy delivered into the spinal cord. And you can see how rapidly these pulses are given. And this was a very novel approach. And what, what we looked at is we actually did a huge study where we looked at uh, pain relief in patients uh, that had traditional spinal cord stimulation to, to this HF10 therapy or the FAST therapy. And what's really, really interesting in looking at this is both patients that got normal stimulation as well as this special therapy did really, really well. Both patients got pain relief. And that's because spinal cord stimulation works. It's not experimental, it works really, really well. The question is, what type of therapy is best for the patient? And they found in this that this high frequency therapy gave patients even more relief for their back pain, which is on the left, and leg pain, which is on the right. And they did this out to two years. The bottom is in months. So they looked at these patients and said, wow, these patients are able to maintain a long-term uh, therapy. And this is the importance of having a algorithmic approach to the therapy so that we can continue to make adjustments so that the stimulation continues to work for you. So this is HF10 therapy. And when this came out, this was actually really, really important for our space. And you can see the preoperative pain levels on these were actually quite high. These guys came in at a seven to eight out of 10, and you can see they were all between a two and a four out of 10 in terms of pain, regardless of stimulation. But with the HF10 therapy, they actually were able to get down to between two and three out of 10 with regard to their chronic back as well as leg pain. So now let's talk about the newest therapy that's out there, and this is called the differential targeted multiplexing therapy. And what's interesting about all the other therapies that we've talked about is it tends to be one signal that's being thrown at the spinal cord in one spot. Now we might make adjustments to that, but the multiplexing therapy is a very cool concept because it uses multiple targets. We have all these wires on the spinal cord. The question is, why not use them? And what's really, really cool about this therapy is that it was actually built from the ground up. So they actually studied this therapy and created it based on preclinical models. That means using animals and other models to build the therapy to actually translate it to, to human use. And that's actually something that's novel. It hasn't been done before. Most types of spinal cord stimulation out there, it's like, well, let's try this programming and see if it works. Unlike that, this actually is built kind of how pharmaceutical companies build drugs. They see, they say, okay, we have something that we want to create. How do we create that? And then they build that drug from the ground up. Same thing here. This was built in the science and given then to our clinical practice. And that's one of the really cool things about this therapy. So this uses multiple signals that are different at different targeted levels. And that's the very cool thing about it is the spinal cord, as we know, is not just one, it's not like a piece of uh, a loaf of bread where every slice is the same all the way through. No, they're all very different. They're different neurons working at different areas. And that's the importance here of targeting specific sets of neurons at different areas. So we can use multiple signals here. And so they're different signal patterns at multiple targeted locations running simultaneously. So it's not like it switches between. These are simultaneous signals. And that's the cool thing about this therapy. And one of the best things that came out of this therapy is actually proving that spinal cord stimulation has an anti-inflammatory component. It actually treats the inflammation that's in the spinal cord. And the cool thing about it is it actually got some of the best responses in terms of uh, back pain responder rates as well as durable outcomes long term. So 84% of patients had effective pain relief at 12 months. And then on top of that, looking at uh, one year, they had an average pain at a 1.7 compared to 7.4 at the beginning. And so like you see on this diagram on the right, patients still had pain relief with spinal cord stimulation. We know it works. But the cool thing is we're continuing to get better with the therapy as we learn how it works and which patients each of these works best for. The other thing that I think is very cool, and this is a hard graph to understand, so don't look at it too much, 
But the cool thing about this study is it showed that 70% of patients fell into the extremely high responder rate. And what that means is 70% of patients had over 80% relief of their pain. And that's a very, that's what we call profound. That is a profound response to spinal cord stimulation. And it's what I'm looking for for patients. I want patients to have home runs where it's a life-changing therapy for patients. So in summary, spinal cord stimulation is not new. It's not experimental. It's evidence-based pain relief for patients with intractable pain. It works through multiple mechanisms, and that's rooted in basic science. And it's important that the physician's involved in this. And depending on what type of pain you have, we use different electrical parameters to target that so that you are getting the best pain relief and personalized medicine that you can, you can have. We'll take any questions. Um, and if, if we don't have any this week, that's totally fine. I know that was that was very uh, in depth. Uh, but join us every Thursday. We'll continue to work forward with our with our part four out of four of spinal cord stimulation next week. Um, and again, comment on the videos either on Facebook or YouTube, and I'll definitely pay attention and see if I can't get a comment back there and answer your questions out there. But otherwise, thank you. Mm -hmm.